This video is an update to my earlier video about the linear tracking sensor of a Biogram 4000 series turntable. For more information, please visit my blog at biolover.blogspot.com or go to my website at www.biolover.com. In this video, I will show the new drop in ready surface mount LED based assembly to replace the light bulb in the tracking sensor. I will also discuss the circuit and I will show how to adjust the mechanism after installing the LED based assembly. This here shows the linear tracking sensor schematically. This is from the service manual. The tone arm is connected via this U profile to this cylinder, which uh, contains the bearing for the arm. On the outside of the cylinder, the aperture is bolted that controls the amount of light that goes from this light bulb onto the photoresistor that is down here in this housing. So as the tone arm gets pulled inwards by the groove of the record, the aperture moves concurrently and that increases the amount of light that falls on the photosensor that is below here, which then turns on the linear tracking servo, which moves the carriage towards the center of the record and that restores the position of the uh, tone arm and the aperture is back in its start position. So we have a negative feedback loop that tracks the carriage after the movement of the tone arm which is determined by the groove of the record. Here's the relevant part of the circuit diagram for the linear tracking mechanism. Down here we have the linear tracking servo motor which is controlled by an H-bridge. These are these four groups of transistors. And if we pull up these two transistors, then the motor spins in a direction that uh, drives the carriage towards the center of the record. So this end is connected here via the photo uh, resistor to the 21 volt power rail. And so as the aperture moves, the amount of light on the photoresistor changes. So if the light increases, the resistance becomes smaller. That means the voltage drop is smaller. That pulls up the basis down here and that turns on the motor. This restores the position of the aperture. The amount of light falling on the resistor is lowered and that slows down the motor and finally stops it. And so we have here an electromechanical uh, feedback loop that controls the carriage position as the tone arm gets drawn towards the center of the record as it plays. Here we see the assembly. This is the tone arm. This is the cylinder. That's the ring that holds the aperture. And this is the housing that contains the light bulb and the photoresistor in the bottom here. This photo shows the housing after taking off the the upper part that contains the lamp. So I had to unsolder these two pads and then uh, take out the two screws. And so here you see the aperture and this is how it moves together with the uh, tone arm. This here shows the top part of the sensor housing with the built-in light bulb. Unfortunately, the light bulb is glued into this plastic part and so it's not straightforward to replace it. This here shows my original solution for historic reasons where I replaced the light bulb in the actual housing with this LED assembly. So this is a 3D printed part into which I integrated a standard 5mm amber LED and a resistor which sits inside this housing. What I didn't like about this solution is that I had to follow a laborious process to remove the light bulb and then uh, put in this uh, small 3D printed part. Here you see my redesign. It consists of two parts. This part is 3D printed and it is identical to the lower part of the original bulb housing. The other part here that is a custom designed PCB that contains the light emitting diode and the current limiting resistor. And so the 3D printed part is now simply glued on top of this PCB and the LED sticks out through this small orifice. This here shows the updated part assembled. So I glued the PCB on top of the 3D printed part that the LED would protrude from this small orifice. 
This design ensures that the location of the light emitter is very stable relative to the aperture of the tracking sensor and this ensures long-term stability of the adjustment. Okay, now it's time to put the part in. So you simply place it here in the location of the original light bulb housing and now we put the two screws back in. And the second one. Now it's time to solder the leads to the tabs. It's best to start out by putting dabs of flux onto the uh, solder that is already present on these pads to allow the solder to reflow when heated up. And so all that's needed now is to press the leads down and heat up the solder together with the flux and that ensures good connections. If you're lucky at this point everything works again like it used to with the incandescent light bulb. However since the LED most likely has a slightly different position than the filament of the light bulb had before the exchange the tracking mechanism will be slightly off kilter. The goal of the uh, tracking mechanism is to keep the tone arm as parallel as possible or as tangential as possible to the uh, groove of the record. So when everything is adjusted properly the tone arm tracks in an about parallel alignment with the sensor arms. The tone arm gets pulled in a little bit so we get maybe one two degrees off here and then immediately the servo motor adjusts the carriage that we have again a parallel situation. So what can happen after putting the LED in is that either the angle is too steep so that the tone arm can move in a few millimeters here before the carriage starts moving that means we have an unwanted angle relative to the uh, a groove during tracking, also it doesn't look pretty. The other extreme is that the tone arm simply continues moving independent of the tracking sensor. So what needs to be done, if you're lucky, is to simply adjust the sensor relative to the aperture by means of this excenter. So we have this set screw that holds everything in position, so this needs to be loosened. And then we can use this excenter to move this entire assembly one millimeter left or right. If that doesn't yield enough range to obtain a good tracking position, then the aperture needs to be adjusted. Uh, relative to the tone arm and that can be done by loosening the aperture set screw and rotating the aperture relative to this cylinder forth or back depending on in which direction you need to go. This here is a little bit tricky, it's very sensitive and when I did this the first time with the original assembly I had to do this a bunch of times to uh, get the position right that I could then precisely adjust it with the excenter. I assume with the new assembly this will most likely not be necessary because the LED is precisely in the center of the replacement housing. This here shows what happens if the mechanism ends up to be adjusted a little bit too sensitive after the replacement assembly is installed. So what we see here is after the tone arm goes down the carriage continues moving. And then after it stops you see here that the angle is a little bit uh, too large. These two arms should be nearly parallel or the angle should be a little bit towards the center of the record while it is running. So the adjustment process starts by cracking open the locking screw a little bit.
So that enables then to use the center over here to move the assembly force and back a little bit. So in this case, with the two sensitive tracking mechanism, the excenter needs to be turned a little bit clockwise. If the angle here would be too small, so the tracking mechanism would be a little bit too reluctant to follow the advancement of the needle towards the center of the record, then we would have to turn this counterclockwise. So here in this case, we turn it clockwise. So I'm moving it forth and back a little bit to demo the movement of the unit, but so here I end up about an eighth or so of a turn clockwise. Don't forget to tighten the locking screw after the adjustment is made. This here now shows the behavior of a mechanism that is about adjusted right. So you see when the arm goes down, the carriage stops. And then after the arm is down, we get here a slight decrease of the distance and then the, ar the carriage starts moving towards the center of the record. This concludes my update about the linear tracking sensor. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in this part, just send me an email. It is available to the community. Thanks for watching.